Well, sometimes that is better. The person you put up there ain't the person that comes back. Uh, it's that song to get down with. About six feet under. Get down. Ooh, I love this song. And now we come to the thrilling final episode of our radio drama. Hello and welcome to episode 185 of the Rotten Views Podcast. We have a really fun one in store for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. At least I find it a fun movie, but maybe you guys hate it, so we'll see. Sadly, the timing of this movie isn't going to be out on St. Patrick's Day, as you already know, because it's already gone by. I'm editing this uh, right now as we speak. Um, but yeah, it was done beforehand, and I got my scheduling mixed up, and I did Tremors 2 which came out uh, the day before St. Patrick's Day, so my bad, but, you know, anyways, it is what it is. We got a horror movie for you guys. It's St. Patrick's Day. It's a Leprechaun-themed movie, so hopefully you guys enjoy it, but as you probably already know by the title, we're watching Leprechaun 3 from 1995. It's got an hour and 33-minute runtime. Um, I have the box set somewhere for this, but I kind of might have misplaced it at this point in time. It's probably in storage for all I know. Uh, so we're watching it actually on Tubi, uh, and apparently at the point in time of this recording, it's going to expire or leave the site soon so if you guys haven't watched it you can maybe still find it on tubi depending on when you're listening to this i know sometimes tubi says stuff is leaving but then it never actually leaves so i'm not sure what's going on there but we're revisiting the tubi site because we enjoy it we love it and you know tubi if you're listening to this and want to sponsor me go ahead because you know we also have the sponsor uh w energy uh use uh promo code rotten views at checkout just putting that in there and just you know putting a little bit of business out there before we get into the podcast at hand but in the off chance you guys don't like energy drinks or um protein powder i don't know the technical aspect of it it's a protein energy powder that you you put in your water and it helps you stay awake um it's essentially g fuel but not i don't know if you guys even know what g fuel is i i drink it all uh, i enjoy the stuff i like it and i find it helps me with my energy throughout the day so maybe you guys will check out w um the links will be down in the description below like i said use promo code rotten views uh, check out to say 10% off your order. You know, saves you a little bit, gives me a little bit. We all help each other out at the end. So, you know, go check it out if you want to. Uh, hopefully you guys will. If not, it's fine. And while we're on that little tangent, you know, if you guys don't want to check that out, maybe check out some of my social media links. You know, at Typhoon Sign, find me on all social media links down below. Be in the description. But the main things you find me on is Instagram. We have the X page. We have TikTok. We have uh, the Facebook art page as well. The main thing that we're pushing is the YouTube channel where we've been streaming live almost every single night. Uh, been taking a few days off here and there just to work on some artwork and do some other stuff around the house and whatnot. So it's not been every single night, but for a couple weeks there, we're going for five, six, six times in a week. So it's pretty good. I enjoy it. So hopefully you guys will check it out. Uh, we'll be streaming some other games here soon too as well. We've been doing a lot of GTA Online. Having fun with it. But we'll be switching it up at some point. You got the new season of Fortnite. You got the new season of Fall Guys. So we'll check that kind of stuff out. And apparently um, the Multiverses game is coming back. I'm not sure when yet, but there's been some... Uh, spoilers on X, so we'll be doing that uh, that game as well. If you guys don't know, it's a it's pretty much like Smash Brothers, but it's all Warner Brothers characters. So you got Bugs Bunny, you got Taz, you got Scooby Doo or Shaggy, and then you have other random characters from Steven's Universe and Adventure Time. And there's Gizmo and Gremlins, uh, Stripe. I mean, from Gremlins, it's a pretty fun game, fun little beat 'em up. And we will be replaying some more of uh, Turtles uh, Shredder's Revenge because I've been getting requests for that as well. So we will be doing that and we'll be doing some art streams as well. I might start streaming on Twitch as well. I'm not too sure yet, but we'll see how that stuff all goes. But anyways, enough of that. You guys are here to listen to me talk about a movie. Uh, Leprechaun 3, like I said, from 1995 for an hour and 33 minutes. It's a horror comedy. In the description, as read from Tubi, uh, Rampaging Leprechaun is on the hunt for gold in Las Vegas after an unlucky college student stumbles upon one of 
of his stolen gold shillings. Uh, this is directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who is also known for um, being the director for Stunt Rock from 1978. Elimination Game, he was a writer from 2014. He was the director for 2014's Drive Hard, and he was also the director for 1975's The Man from Hong Kong. I know none of those movies. I might know Drive Hard. That sounds familiar. Is that the Nicolas Cage movie? Or is that Drive Angry? I don't know. Well, I might be getting them mixed up. I might know. I might not know any of his movies. Maybe there's a reason for that. Who knows? One of the writers credited for this movie is Mark Jones, who's best known for being the writer for the original Leprechaun from 1992. He was also the writer for 1995's Rumpelstiltskin. He did two episodes of the 1985 TV show The Hunter, and he also did an episode of Nightman from 1998. I remember that comic book. I don't remember the TV show at all. There's probably a reason for that. Maybe we'll revisit that. I kind of want to revisit a lot of these things. If I can find copies of them somewhere, uh, you know, on the internet somewhere, uh, maybe we'll do that. Because that could be fun content. Even if it's just for an extra, you know, YouTube episode here and there. You know, assuming that the copyright stuff doesn't kill me. Uh, We'll see. We also have a second writer credit for this uh, movie as well. His name is David Dubois. Um, He's also done stuff I don't know anything about. Uh, Apparently he was a writer for 2008's uh, Doubting Thomas Lies and Spies. Uh, He was a producer for 2015's Delta Justice, uh, the Isalon's Trapper's War, which apparently has an 8.1 rating on INDB. He's also the writer for 2006 TV movie Cradle of Lies. None of these sound interesting. I could be wrong. Let me know down in the comments below if they are interesting movies, but I highly, highly doubt it. And I highly doubt you know anything about them either. And then we also like to talk about, you know, some of the actors in the movies. But, you know, let's be honest. We're only going to talk about Warwick Davis in this one. Who's best known for being Willow in the 1988 movie, Willow. Uh, he's best known for being the Leprechaun for most of the movies. He was also Marvin from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy from 2005. Um, other than that, you know, he's pretty well known for being the Leprechaun. So, uh, let's go with it. The tagline for this movie. Welcome to Vegas. Your losing streak is about to begin. And a little bit of trivia on this movie. Kind of fun. Uh, the movie was filmed in just 14 days. So that seems like a really good turnaround for me. Uh, I don't know anything about filming movies. So maybe that's not great. I really don't know. But I'm assuming that's really goddamn quick. The initial release date for this movie was June 27th, 1995. With a budget of $1.2 million. And it's distributed by Trimark Pictures. And based on characters by Mark Jones. So, for my podcast, for anyone who's new, uh, thank you for showing up for this episode. If this is your very first episode, hopefully you're still here listening to me ramble. Uh, I appreciate it if you are, and I, I appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, you know, the follow, whatever whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. I appreciate it if you keep listening. Uh, but what I want to let you guys know, uh, because I'm going to talk about this movie from start to finish and hit all the points in between that interest me. So if you don't want to be spoiled, make sure to pause the episode now. Go find a copy of it and, you know, watch the movie if you want to. Or just, you know, sit here, relax, get comfy, get some popcorn, some Doritos, whatever your your favorite thing is. Or if you're at work listening to it, you know, just keep working, keep, keep being busy. Hopefully it helps you get through the day. Uh, but like I said, you're going to get spoiled. So if you don't want to be spoiled, feel free to pause it now and come back. Or just listen to me talk about the movie and I should hit all the points and, you know, pretty much describe this movie to a point for you. And hopefully uh, it makes sense. Uh, that's all I got, really. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get started on the movie right now. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Enjoy it. Presents Saturday Night at the Movies, the television series which each week brings you the finest in recent motion pictures. Tonight... Las Vegas, a gambler's dream, and a dreamer's paradise. They're all about to meet their worst nightmare. Look out, Vegas. Take it over! Now, the leprechaun's back in the city that never sleeps. <laughs> and he will never rest until he reclaims his pot of gold. It belongs to me, this gold I smell. Whoever's got it's going to hell. I want me shilling. Hello? <laughs> If we destroy the gold, we get rid of the leprechaun once and for all. Leprechaun 3, the third time's the charm. 
yeah, the uh, intro music slowly starting to amp up, and then we see the Leprechaun 3 title font come up on the screen. It kind of looks like it's like supposed to be like a Vegas sign of some sort. You know, it's just lighting up, essentially, and then the giant 3. And then we cut right into the uh, Leprechaun-style music as the intro credits start to roll some more. As the intro credits are starting to roll, we see a shot of Vegas as we're up in the air. We're seeing all the different buildings. We see the, the Pyramid Casino. I'm not sure what it's some style of Egyptian casino. And then, of course, we see a McDonald's sign of, like, nowhere. Just lit up. Here, this little car pulling up to the, the pawn palace, or pawn place. Pawn shop, essentially. This guy's walking in with a tattoo on the top of his hand that says Lucky. Uh, he doesn't look too lucky, though, because he's missing a leg, and he's walking with a crutch, and he's got an eye patch on, and he's got a hook for a hand. I don't know what's lucky about him at all. Anyways, he's dragging in a giant sack, and this, the teller's like, uh, so, uh, what is this terrible thing? And the guy's like, it's a good luck charm. Can't you see? It's a stone leg. Leprechaun, it's a good luck trap, I tell ya. And then the guy with the eye patch is like, whatever you do, don't touch the medallion on them, though. Don't touch the medallion. So then the teller guy working at the pawn shop is like, I'll give you $10. And the guy's like, no. He's like, oh, fine. I'll give you te- $20. And he just shoots the guy out. He's like, yeah, come back soon. It's like, wow, that was really easy. And of course, as soon as I patch McGee's gone out of the building, he's like, oh, only a face a mother could love. And then he pokes the medallion and it moves. He's like, ah, no big deal. Just takes the medallion off and looks under his uh, magnifying glass. And as he's doing that, the leprechaun comes alive, of course. And the pawn shop owner's looking at him. He's like, oh, it's junk. That's why he did- told me not to touch it because it's probably going to break. And then he turns around and the leprechaun's gone but there's a pot of gold sitting in the sack he's looking at it, he's like oh gold okay I like this and he puts the pot of gold underneath his magnifying glass and he's like biting on him he's like oh I made a wonderful deal for $20 and then the leprechaun jumps on his back and starts biting his ear he's like ah oh, so spicy and then the leprechaun starts like beating his feet with the shillelagh he starts beating him in the, the kneecaps he's like ah you're a dirty thief oh nice leather on your shoes I appreciate a good pair of shoes and then we see the leprechaun has a foot fetish because he literally takes the guy's the pawn shop owner's foot and bites his toe off and he starts screaming he's like i think i'm gonna whack you in the head a couple of times and that's when we see the pawn shop owner holds up the medallion he's like ah get it away from me get it away so then the leprechaun's like you're a dirty thief i'm gonna take my gold and take what's mine and just be gone from here and then as he's leaving of course one gold coin drops out of the bucket and falls on the floor and then we see this blonde lady who's beating up her punch buggy because it breaks down the side of the road and then she's just standing out there with her thumb out and then we see our, our other lead scott who's like driving not paying attention all almost runs her over and he has to like pull off on the sidewalk being like hey sorry and you find out the other person that he almost hit is tammy she's like do you know anything about cars because this thing won't start at all it just died on me it won't do anything <laughs> and scott's like well i know nothing about cars but yeah let's take a look and of course because it's a punch bug he pulls up the hood he's like ha see somebody stole your engine that's the problem there's no engine in here so scott's like so i uh, turn it on let's uh, see what it sounds like <laughs> and it starts making this purring sound and then tammy comes out it's like what's wrong with this he's like you ever blown a rock before she's like uh excuse me maybe a couple times see your pawn shop owner just hobbling around as his foot's all bandaged up now he's got bandaged on his ear you know to stop the bleeding and he puts in a cd-rom into his computer to learn about leprechauns then we cut to the leprechaun sitting somewhere on the floor counting his pot of gold and he just realized he's missing a piece of gold and now he was really pissed off about it and we see scott and tammy driving and scott's just looking all around he's like oh look at all the lights man it's so unbelievable Apparently he's just moving to Las Vegas by the sounds of it. He's just, you know, amazed by all the lights. We find out that Tammy works at a casino, apparently, and she's a magician's assistant. And one of these days, she's going to have her own act and be, like, Vegas' own, I don't know, carrot top? I got nothing. Then we find out apparently Scott's just, you know, swinging through Vegas because he's on his way to school. You know, he's on his way to Scottsdale, I believe they said. I wasn't really paying attention. But, you know, he just wanted to, you know, check out Vegas to see what it looked like. That's why he's all shocked by how many lights are around all the buildings. Let me see the pawn shop owner getting ready to leave the store. He's got a flashlight, he's got the medallion, he's got a revolver fully loaded. And looks down and he's like, oh, look, a little piece of gold. Let's go find you, little leprechaun bastard. So the pawn shop owner is actually going into, like, his back room where he's holding all his items. That's by the looks of where the leprechaun's hiding. Because he, he, when he's sitting on the floor counting his gold, we see all these items all over the place. We weren't really sure where he was, but apparently he's just hiding in the stock room at the pawn shop the whole time. And he hides his pot of gold inside his safe. But then we see the pawn shop owner walking around with the medallion on the hand, flashlight, gun ray, being like, I'm ready to hunt some leprechauns. 
And we see Scott he's asking Tammy, because he just drops her off at the casino for work. He's like, so, uh, can you, like, get me into the casino as, like, a favor? I know I'm not 21 yet, but I kind of just want to look around and see what it looks like. She's like, you know, I could get fired. My boss could lose his license. But, you know, as long as you don't gamble at all, I guess I can get you in. I see the leprechaun inside the warehouse, you know, pulling some tricks on the pawn shop owner because he's, like, diverting the pawn shop owner's attention to a uh, delusion or, uh, like, a hologram of him, I guess you could say. The whole time this is happening, the leprechaun's using his magic to turn a Cupid statue, and then he actually makes the statue come alive, so the arrow actually shoots out and gets the pawn shop owner in the wrist. And then the pawn shop owner goes to shoot the leprechaun because the leprechaun finally appears, and the leprechaun puts his finger in the barrel of the gun, and the gun just blows up and knocks the pawn shop owner to the ground. So then the leprechaun goes to jump on, so the pawn shop owner just rams that medallion into the leprechaun's mouth, and it kind of like slowly starts to burn him. And so we then see Scott just walk around the casino floor and he's looking all around and just being amazed at all the games happening and then we come to um I want to say relent, but I could be wrong at this point in time. My pretty sure it's relent. Anyways, it looks like this preacher guy, and he's having some girls blow on his dice for good luck. And Scott's just like, wow, this is really amazing. I could probably play this game. And then we see Fazio, the magician, talking to this other lady, Greta, I believe, being like, so uh, where's Tammy? I don't know. It's past 7 o'clock. And Greta's like, so why do you even keep her around? He's like, well, she fills out a costume pretty well, if you want to be honest about it. So her name's not Greta. It's Loretta. My bad. I'm on to correct that now, just so everyone knows I'm not dumbass then we see tammy finally showing up for work and she's in this like kind of magician helper outfit but she kind of looks like a playboy bunny kind of like a playboy bunny outfit minus the ears and apparently they're not doing the rings trick this tonight they're doing a flamethrower trick and tammy's like mm, i don't really know about that one actually because you just set the table on fire then uh, mitch that uh, might be the guy who runs the casino is like so fazio is this a, the really big magic trick you want me to see ahead of time it ain't gonna happen because guess what this is gonna be my future headliner because you're you're old and she's hot chick and uh i'm not letting you catch her on fire so we actually see scott walking around the casino a little bit more and we actually see loretta she actually works some of the card tables she's not actually part of the magician act at all that's when we then see scott stopping and he's looking at an envelope that's in his pocket and it's like written on saying that she have enough to cover you know his housing a bunch of other things and he opens it up and inside is a check from his parents for 20 three thousand dollars and then he sees mitch he's like hey sir do you know where i can cash this check and mitch is like ah you even old enough to be in this casino to be honest with you he looks at the check he's like oh yes you are you're definitely old enough you can go cash that right over there sir and uh, scott's leaving uh mitch is getting roughed up by some card shark loan sharks whatever you want to call them uh, apparently uh mitch the owner of the casino owns owns some guys some money and they're going to rough him up if they don't have payment the bodyguard guy's name is Art. he's like you pay him the money or i will kill He's like, where, where are you guys? Tough guys I have him or it's tougher than you. What are you doing here? And we see excited stupid man who cashed in apparently all his goddamn money. Uh, walking around with some chips being like, hi, I'm going to definitely win and make more money. You dumbass. And we see the pawn shop owner just sitting down. Having, the, having a drink and then the back door slowly screeches open. And the leprechaun pops up and has a burp because he's drinking some booze as well. He's like, hey, it was a stormy weather and... He goes on about some goddamn poem, and then the pawn shop owner's like, Haha, you're a very funny, poetic leprechaun you are. That's when then the pawn shop owner wants to make a deal with the leprechaun. He's like, I'll give you this medallion, which you're terrified of, if you give me half of your gold. And of course, the leprechaun's like, yeah, I'll make you a deal if you put the medallion away. So then the, the pawn shop owner puts a hat down on it. He's like, ah, maybe actually I'll do some fishing. And then he makes a fishing rod, you know, shoot the line, grabs the medallion, the medallion goes flying, and then the leprechaun goes, goes towards the pawn shop owner. He's like, oh, I made a bad mistake, didn't I? And then we cut back to Scott, who's apparently losing all his goddamn money to Loretta. Correction, he's got a couple hundred dollars left of the $2,300 that he had. 23000 Whatever it might have been. Pretty sure that the check said 1000 but I'm pretty sure Scott said 100 So, it is what it is. Then we cut to Fazio doing his little magician trick, and, uh, you know, he's got the show going, and uh, he was correct. Uh, Tammy does fill out the costume pretty well. Uh, I guess that's probably her only redeeming factor at this point. Anyways, he's got two 
uh, like standing boxes on the stage, and there's a curtain in front of both of them. He puts her in the one, and he's walking over to the other one, expecting her to be in it. He opens up the curtain, and of course, it's empty. So then he has to close the curtain again and redo it again. He's like, ah, there she is, finally, with the handcuffs off. About the goddamn time he showed up, Tammy. And then we see them mumbling with each other. He's like, where were you? She's like, I told you, the goddamn trap door keeps getting goddamn stuck. And then we see Loretta taking more of Scott's money. She's like, ah, you know, you've had bad, some bad luck, but don't give up. Yeah, you, you're gonna have, you're gonna win sooner or later, right? So then, uh, Loretta convinces him to take the watch that his grandfather gave him over to the pawn shop across the road, the pawn it, to get some more money so he can gamble in the casino. Then we cut back to the pawn shop, which is the one where the leprechaun is beating the crap out of the pawn shop owner with his shillelagh. Correction, we cut back to the pawn shop and the leprechaun is beating the pawn shop owner with a baseball bat. And then, the leprechaun grabs a phone, a corded phone. You might not know what that is anymore, half to look it up that's fine just pause the episode now and go to google uh but yeah he's using corded phone to now choke out pawn shop owner and then the pawn shop owner drops face down on the ground he's like oh what was i thinking well all this killing i lost my last shilling and scott walks into the pawn shop and sees that there's stuff all over the place and just starts yelling hello anybody here i wonder why your store is such a mess and then he sees the pawn shop owner face down on the floor he's like, oh my uh why is the phone wrapped around your throat sir and then we, scott's like well i thought i had problems you're stupid man for someone who's going to call it, you are so dumb. Anyways, he then uses the phone, calls the operator, calls 911. Like, I'm in a pawn shop crafts from a casino. I found a dead person. And that computer just starts playing on the computer again, talking about leprechauns and how two's bad. And then Scott looks down and finds the gold shilling and grabs it. He's like, huh, I guess I should probably take this back because, you know, I could probably get rich off of this and then it starts to glow red and he just disappears as the leprechaun's going to hit him with an axe and he's like oh, i missed him he's got my damn shilling and when scott reappears in the casino he's still playing the game with loretta and he actually finally wins and then scott of course wins again because he takes his golden shilling puts it over top of his chips and then it magically moves it into the right number spot and he wins again and then mitch comes up behind loretta he's like what the hell is going on here why is he winning so much and then he wins for a third time in a row and mitch is like uh, loretta you gotta do something better what's going on here loretta then we see the leprechaun just walking through the strip just all through the crowds and no one's really paying too much attention i guess i guess it's las vegas and they see leprechauns all the time i don't know and then scott wins again so then mitch is like ah ladies and gentlemen so uh we're going to close this table now uh until a further notice uh it won't be long but it's closer right now then uh, Mitch goes over to Scott. He's like, ah, you're on quite the winning streak, aren't you? You staying at the hotel much yet? He's like, ah, no, actually, I was just passing through. He's like, well, here, here's his key. Uh, you stay at this hotel. Anything you want is definitely on me. Uh, maybe you can start gambling again soon and not win. And then we see Tammy in her magician attire with a white coat over top. And she's like, mm, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be gambling. You're supposed to be out of here. And Scott's like, so I was losing my shirt. Then I went to go pawn my watch at the pawn shop. Then I found a dead guy at the pawn shop and then i appeared back at the casino and i started winning i haven't lost since he's like what what are you talking about tammy's trying to convince scott to get back into his car and just get out of las vegas and scott's like no no i can't this all happened because of you and i found you so i want to share it with you and she's like no no just go cash in your chips stay in the room and don't let anyone in at all and loretta's watching from behind a slot machine the whole time and scott goes to cash out and the lady behind the desk like wow you did really well for yourself he's like well you know it wasn't too bad of a night i guess and then we see the the leprechaun walking up to the Lucky Shamrock Casino by the looks of it. And a long limo pulls up so he starts dragging his nail along the side of it. And then out comes an Elvis person there and he's like, oh, I really like those uh, shoes. They come in blue, blue suede by chance. He's like, ah, probably not. We see Fazio doing another magic trick in this casino. He's like, oh, I'll grant an animal. And he pulls out a bunny. He's like, ah, of course the casino won't let me have really animals in the casino though, of course. And then the leprechaun shows up and scares away the lady Fazio was just talking to. And he doesn't their magic trick and he pulls out some green steaming poop he's like ah the leprechaun goes on about how it's made fresh daily and it's made from a shillelagh and then fazio shows up beside loretta and she's like ah you 
see my tramp somewhere? It's like, ah, oh, don't don't worry about Tammy. Look at this guy. He's been uh, taking money for the casino. Somehow he's got like a lucky horseshoe up his ass. I don't know how. And then uh, Fazio and Loretta are making comments about finding out uh, Scott's room and taking the money out of it because they're sleazeballs. And we see uh, the leprechaun sitting on the dice rolling table and he's just winning money like crazy. And then Art shows up and he's like, ah, oh, look, a high roller, huh? Hmm, kind of funny, little guy that you're winning so much money. So then the bouncer goes to throw the leprechaun out and the leprechaun puts a silver coin in his mouth and pulls down his arm like a slot machine. And then a bunch of coins start falling out of his mouth. He's like, ah, I love this place. So many sleazeballs all over the place. Then we just see Scott inside of his hotel room that he has at the casino now. Just, you know, smelling the money because that's what rich people do, apparently. And Fazio sneaks into his room while Scott's brushing his teeth and he's going through all his luggage trying to find the money. He's like, oh, it's still got underwear. I'm actually going to keep those because they're probably going to fit me. And Scott comes out of the washroom. He's like, hey, what are you doing in my room? And then Fazio throws the silk underwear at him and gut punches him and then throws in a little smoke bomb from his magic arsenal. But before doing so, he grabbed that one gold chilling that was on the dresser of the Scott's good luck charm. And then a little tray, food tray gets pushed in, and it's the leprechaun behind. He's like, ah, food service. And Scott's like, what the hell are you? He's like, well, uh, leprechaun, I'm here to get my gold. Of course, what do you think I am? So then the leprechaun jumps on Scott and starts biting him in, like, the wrist area. So Scott grabs a knife, and then stabs the leprechaun in the forehead and throws him out the window. And Scott's room is, like, four or five floors up by the looks of it, at least. And Scott uses the phone. He's like, ah, uh, so can you give me hotel security? And they're like, yeah, what do you want? Uh, leprechaun in the room that tried to kill me. Yeah. Not really a leprechaun it tried to kill me and we see the leprechaun waking up outside from the fall he's still got the knife stuck in his forehead and he just breaks the, f- the knife off and he's like next time i'll take the elevator and scott's in the washroom like washing off the blood and then he's looking in the mirror and then he his face slowly changes a little bit and changes back into human but at one point in time it changed into like a leprechaun and it looks like he's getting sick uh, apparently now if a leprechaun bites you you slowly turn into a leprechaun like a werewolf bite essentially and fascio finally finds loretta who's just at her table getting ready to clean up and like get open and he's like you know what i didn't find no money i just found this stupid coin you know we're gonna split it and she's like no we're not selling the stupid coin it's magical it has certain powers and it always know what's gonna win so then she tries to show him that the coin moves to the winning number but of course the coin doesn't do anything at all and she's like i don't know what to tell you they used to move it used to move to the winning number and mitch walks in because he's like the owner of the casino he's like fuzzy i know you got magic to do in the bag or some kind of work so how about you be gone and then he talks to lorraine or loretta and he's like so uh you got my money back yet uh, because I need it. He's like, oh, look at that coin. Give me that coin. I'll take that coin for for the time being. And then Loretta's making fun of him how he can't get a girl at all. And he's like, I could have any woman I want. She's like, just like that dumb bimbo Tammy. It's like, yeah, I wish. I wish I could have Tammy. And then the uh, coin actually, you know, lights up. And then Tammy has like a, a headache appearing. And then she just comes over to Mitch. She's like, Mitch, I want you. I want you more than anything ever. And Loretta's like, uh, Tammy, do you have a fever? Are you feeling sick? Are you feeling okay? Are you having a stroke? Like, what's going on here, Tammy? Then as the last minute, Mitch is getting into the elevator. He flips a coin as Tammy's in the elevator as well. And Loretta's like, yeah, that's what he did. He he said the magic word. I wish. That's what makes the coin work. <laughs> and now there, Tammy's like, Mitchie, I like my men just like I like everything else. It's tough and hard. And then she literally just starts slapping him around the elevator. She's like, oh, wow, you're tearing me out so much. Let me just smack you around some more. And Mitch is like, yeah, yeah, you like that? Here, watch me uh, headbutt the elevator door. Then we get to Mitch's room, and it's your typical man whore pimp looking room with the what I'm assuming is a water bed with the leopard or not a leopard a zebra print you know comforter and these suede looking or silk looking pillowcases and crap I don't know yeah, I think it's also got stripper pole to be honest with you then Loretta's outside of Mitch's room she hears the music blasting she's listening in a little bit and we see you know Tammy doing a little bit of a strip tease so then she has a key for his room so she just unlocks the door slowly starts to sneak in to try and find the gold coin so she can take it back then as soon as Loretta leaves the room with the coin and shuts the door the spell breaks and tammy's holding her chest being like mitch how did i get here what am i doing here and then she sacks him because he's like oh yeah yeah i know we're here we're here for you know fun stuff and yeah she uh knees him in the crotch and he's like you're 
fired after this. Now you're going to be fired after this show tonight, you meanie. And Scott's finally waking up from being on the floor the whole time. And uh, inside that little serving tray that the leprechaun brought in was a baked potato. And apparently baked potatoes is like a leprechaun's favorite meal. So he is slowly becoming a leprechaun of some sort. Let me see the leprechaun sneaking into Mitch's room because he smelt the gold coin in there. He's trying to find who's got the gold coin because he just keeps having the scent of it. And then the leprechaun comes behind the TV and starts playing with it. And Mitch is like, what the hell's going on with the TV? Why is it all staticky? And then uh, a lady comes on the TV who is well and down in the uh, the chest area. And she undresses. And that gets Mitch's attention. Let me see Scott in like a diner looking area where he orders everything potato related french fries baked potatoes mashed potatoes anything and everything and then he starts talking like a leprechaun and it sounds really really stupid and he starts eating his spuds and he's like wait a minute what the hell did i just say what how, how was i talking like that and mitch starts getting closer and closer to the tv because he wants to make it with the tv and then the lady comes through the tv so now he feels like he's in heaven essentially and loretta just happens to be walking by mitch's table and like chewing on the coin to see if it's real gold or not he's like hey uh uh, you know where Tammy is? And she's like, ah, up in Mitch's office getting, you know, her table clean, block clean, whatever. And he's like, where's that? So then he starts running off to uh, Mitch's room. And then as Scott is running to the elevator to get up to Mitch's room, uh, Tammy's coming out of the elevator crying. And it's like, well, what's the matter? What happened? He's like, it's just life, you know. It's, just, it's not like it's the first time it's happened to me. The only thing that sucks about this time is this time I got fired for it, too. And Scott being the tough guy now, he's like, no, we can't just let him get away from it because if he gets away from it this time, he's just going to do it to someone else. And I'm not going to allow him to do that to my lady. He doesn't say that part, but that's how he's acting. And then the whole time, Mitch is getting off with this random lady that came out of the TV. The TV's still playing, but now it's the leprechaun playing a bunch of different ads about, you know, psychics and being a lawyer and suing and all this other random stuff. And Mitch keeps thinking that he's hearing his name coming from the TV. And he's, he sits up, pushes the lady back a bit, and then the next thing, you know, the lady's like, yes. But now there's an issue with the lady because now the lady's a robot. We have, we see the hands, we see this robotic head, and some fake boobs, and he's like, ah, so I'm in a slight bit of an issue here. And the robot starts to spark, and I'm assuming it's electrocuting Mitch at the same time. Anyways, and Tammy and Scott finally get to Mitch's room. They walk into his room. He's like, sir, I have to talk to you about something. And they see him on the bed and he's dead he's fried and then the leprechaun pops out he's like ah we got something to talk about you have my gold shilling don't you and then it's uh i think art and the his mafia guy the bouncer guy uh, he's like so uh mitch we needed my money and we need to talk right now he's, he looks at mitch and sees mitch's day he's like uh what the hell is going on here why is there a leprechaun in the bed of you mitch and then we see the leprechaun getting in the fight with art and the bodyguard guy and he pokes the bodyguard's guy's eye out with the back of his walking stick i don't know i don't know what it was maybe it's the end of the shillelagh actually and then he starts taking the shillelagh and just beating the crap out of art and art's like that really hurt a lot and then he just you know keeps getting whacked with it i mean there's not much to say about it other than you know the eye poke so yeah, we'll just we'll just jump from that scene from there. Then we see Scott and Tammy running away, and they're hiding behind a car. And Tammy's like, "What are we gonna do? They're not gonna believe us that there's a little monster leprechaun killing people around the casino." And then we see Scott slowly starting to change. He's getting he's getting sideburns. His hands are slowly turning into like leprechaun hands. And Tammy's like, "What the hell is happening to your face?" And of course, at the parking lot, they're hiding behind the cars. They look across the street, and Scott's like, "That's where it happened. That's where it all started. The pawn shop across the street. Let's go see if there's any clues over there." And then we see loretta looking in the mirror holding the coin and she's wanting to be like stacked like a beautiful 20 year old and she wants to be sexy and that's that's her main wish is to be sexy and beautiful again and now we see loretta walking through the casinos everyone's you know looking at her the sexy music's playing the whistles are happening and she you know she's younger and she's well stacked apparently somehow and uh she goes into fazio's uh change room he's like loretta is that, it? that you how how do you look so good and she's showing off her body to fazio and he's like all you had to do was wish for it and she puts the coin up and she's like yeah you're right he steals the coin and then runs out of the room and closes the door behind of course, see Fazio run down a dark and gloomy looking hallway to the end of it and wishing to become the greatest magician of all time. And the, the coin glows red, and of course, he's going to get his wish. And then we see Loretta still looking in the, the mirror, you know, admire herself. And then the leprechaun appears behind her. She's like, Ah, who are you? What what are you actually, to be honest? And then the leprechaun starts mutating Loretta and, you know, making her boobs grow bigger and more deformed, I guess. And then he slowly starts to deform her face as she starts screaming as she's watching 
it all happen in the mirror at the same time. We see Loretta like getting bloated and she's trying to run out of the room and she's gotten so wide from like the hips and the chest area that she actually gets stuck in the door frame to the point where she keeps growing and growing and she blows up and the leprechaun just has an umbrella so he doesn't get Loretta chunks all over him. Then we see Scott and Tammy inside the pawn shop. He's like, well, that's where I found the guy. She's like, you think the leprechaun did? She's like, well, yeah, of course. Who else? The leprechaun was here. And there's also something on the the, uh, computer talking about leprechauns too as well. And Scott at one point in time starts talking like a leprechaun again. And Tammy picks up the medallion and he's looking at it. He's like, ah, get outside. Get outside. It hurts. It hurts. And Scott's like, you know what? There's something here. I can sense it. There's something here that I need. Maybe you should just go away, Tammy. And Tammy's like, no, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to stay here and we're going to figure it out. And Scott starts sniffing around because apparently leprechauns are really good at sniffing for their gold, which is a different trait that I never thought I would understand. Uh, But yeah, his gold sniffing nose takes him right to the safe where the pot of gold is. And he has apparently enough magic powers to open the safe and know the combination. And Tammy's like, hey, you found the gold. And he's like, yes, I did. She's like, so you remember what the computer said? If you find the gold, we can destroy it. We'll kill the leprechaun. He's like, no, no, we're not destroying any gold. Scott slowly starts going more and more leprechaun evil because Tammy takes the gold from his hand and he, you know, threatens her and grabs her. And she slaps and he's like, Hey, what happened? I didn't know what was going on there for a minute. And then, of course, Tammy's like, you know what, Scott? We gotta wish that the leprechaun was dead because the leprechaun uh, appears beside them. And Scott wishes that the leprechaun was in the ocean, you know, you know, with cement around his feet and whatnot. And the leprechaun's like, oh, no, please don't do that. And he's like, Scott, didn't you forget? A leprechaun's gold can't actually hurt the leprechaun. And Tammy throws something at the leprechaun. I'm not sure what it was. But Scott's like, nice pitch. He's like, yeah, I pitched for the, the Vegas Knights or whatever. Don't, don't worry about it. And as they're running out of the pawn shop, she has enough wits to actually grab the medallion off the counter and take it with them they make it to scott's car but scott's like in a lot of pain because he's like feels like my insides are being torn apart and then tammy's like you know what we're gonna take it to the hospital because the hospital is definitely gonna be able to help you in your leprechaun disease we then see them at the hospital and that's when tammy finally realizes that scott's been bit by the leprechaun because his whole arm is all infected and his whole face is infected and it's He's slowly, like, dripping green goos out of his mouth. And a nurse finally takes a look at him. He's like, oh, my God, you got to get in isolation right away. I don't know what's going on with you at all. And then we cut to the leprechaun who's trying to, like, hitch a ride to the hospital because he doesn't want to walk the whole way. We see the doctor's having Scott on the table or on the bed, gurney, whatever you want to call it. And he's starting to freak out. He's starting to, like, you know, spasm, essentially. And the one doctor's like, yeah, we got to hold him down. We got to give him some antibiotics. We don't know what it is, but we got to give him some antibiotics. And then next thing you know, we see the leprechaun walking in and full medical gear. Then the main daughter's like, so this might be the difference between saving your life and letting you die. Do you have health insurance by chance? <laughs> and Scott's just like, do you take the green cross? And then he starts spitting some stuff out of his mouth. Then over the PA system, because this would definitely happen in a hospital, we hear the leprechaun's voice. They're trying to be a doctor being, Tammy, Tammy, please come to the morgue. And she starts freaking out. It's like, oh no, the morgue. <laughs> and then we see the doctor looking over some of uh, Scott's charts. And one of them is like, it says F-U in four leaf clovers. And he's like, I want to see his AQ. EKG. And he looks at that and it's just a leprechaun kicking like his heels together. He's like, it's very funny, guys. And then the doctor's like, so, you know what? Today we'll start with all the tests to start with A and then tomorrow we'll go with letter B and then after that and the nurse is like, you have uh, golf actually on Thursday so you can't actually do that. He's like, yeah, okay, well, so we'll we'll continue the test the day after then if he's not dead. Then we see Tammy walking around the market. She's like, oh, excuse me, sir. And we find out the guy at the desk is dead and she starts freaking out and then the leprechaun throws her on a, a more gurney and straps her down and she starts freaking out and then uh then scott finally wakes up and he must be sensing it because then he has the magical powers to make one of the saw medical saws turns it on and cuts off the straps that are holding him down and then he starts fighting the doctors even though they're trying to sedate him but of course he's using his medical powers and the doctor actually gets like one of the uh I'm sure it's the mask that make you go to sleep. Anyways, he's fighting the mask, and then he accidentally puts a needle in another doctor's butt and knocks that doctor out as well. And then, of course, Leprechaun Scott just finally enters the mark just in time before the Leprechaun cuts off Tammy's nose. And then we have, like, a battle between the fire where the Leprechaun's holding back Scott with, a, like, a roll of fire in front of him. And then uh, he takes off on the medical gurney and just disappears. But now Scott has Tammy again. And then we see Tammy and Scott in the car driving. Tammy's driving, of course, you know, trying to help Scott out. He's like, you know, uh, Leprechaun's going after Fazio. We need to get that shilling. That way I can, you know, save myself and turn me back to normal, hopefully. Then we see Fazio on the stage doing his magic trick. And he's brought the uh, the flamethrower back out again for some goddamn reason. Then we see the Leprechaun appearing on stage with him. He's like, uh, who the hell are you? He's like, uh, don't worry about it. Just give me the gold shilling or I'm going to kill you. 
And we could then cut and see Fazio is now in a box laying on across the table. And he's like, get me out of this damn thing. He's like, yes, I'll get you out of this thing. And the leprechaun jumps up with a chainsaw. And Fazio's like, oh, that's not how I want to get out of here. No. Nope. And uh, Fazio pulls out the gold coin. And he wishes that he was in Caesar's Palace. And the leprechaun's like, no, nope, only one wish. Sorry, you've already had it. Now I'm going to have mine. And we just see the leprechaun taking the chainsaw to the crate, coffin, whatever you want to call it. And we see blood starting to go all over the place. And the crowd's just like, oh my, this is a little messy. And then the leprechaun jumps down like, hey, look at my cutting trick. And he pulls the two pieces apart. And we see some cuts and intestines. And everyone just starts freaking out. And then Scott and Tammy show up on the stage. And Scott tells everyone to get out of the area because this guy's a serial killer, essentially. Or a freak monster. And we see some waiters getting tossed around because the leprechaun's using his magic as everyone's trying to get out of the you know, the arena, whatever you want to call it, the magic room. And then we pretty much see a whole riot happening throughout the whole casino because everyone's just going flying all over the place. And then we see Tammy finds the gold shilling on the ground. So she grabs it and yells for Scott. But then the leprechaun pretty much puts her in a quick spell to keep her from moving, I guess. And he happens to rip off her jacket at the same time. But now she's in that little Playboy bunny looking outfit again. But now Scott has the uh, flamethrower. So then the leprechaun you know, makes a pot of gold appear. And he's like, Scott, come over to the green side. I'll make you rich and share my gold with you. So then Tammy convinces Scott to actually use the flame for her on the pot of gold. He does it. And the pot of gold actually finally disappears after a while. And then we just see the leprechaun getting tossed around the room on fire. And then he drops to the ground. And it's just a burning skeletal leprechaun now. And Scott drops his knees on the ground in pain. And then next thing you know, he's back to normal Scott again. Then we see Scott and Tammy leaving the casino together. And she's like, you know what? We got one last gold shilling. We can have anything we want. And Scott's like, uh, it's your call. And then Tammy's just like, you know what? I think I actually got everything that I want. And she throws the gold coin away. We hear it you know drop into a water fountain and we see the two happy couple together and that's the end of the movie and the credits start to roll and yeah i gotta say i enjoyed this movie uh, then again i enjoy the leprechaun movies a lot i just think they're a lot of fun to watch and i would definitely highly recommend checking them out they're all on tubi right now but like i said earlier this one is in the leaving soon section so it might still be there it might not be but you can find them for cheap i, I think i found my box set at walmart for like 30 bucks uh, around halloween time so definitely well worth the investment for all all the movies uh but yeah i like this movie a lot it's got some fun kills i like i actually like seeing the skeletal version of the leprechaun at the end of the movie totally forgot about that uh but yeah on the rotten scale for me out of 10 i'm getting a 6.5 hopefully you guys will check it out and enjoy it hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and it's that time again where we gotta pick what we're watching next week all right so for this one for next week we're gonna step out of the horror uh movie theme but we're gonna stick with comedy we're gonna do a comedy crime this movie's from 1990 for an hour and 37 minutes you can also find it on tubi because I figured might as well just stick with Tubi because we're having fun with it. It's been a while since I actually watched some stuff on Tubi, so let's check out and see what's on there. And I found uh, starring Robin Williams. We're going to watch Cadillac Man because I've only seen this one a couple times. I'm looking forward to re-watching this one, so hopefully you guys will check it out as well. And as always, if you guys can, make sure to check out the uh, outro band, Blood Opera, Toronto-based horror band. They have a new album out. Go check it out on Spotify. You can find them on, like I said, Spotify, YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much anywhere and everywhere. But definitely go give them a listen on Spotify. They'll appreciate that a lot. All their links will be down in the description below. As well, you can find all my links down below as well. But make sure to follow me on all social media sites. At Typhonstein. We're on Instagram. We're on X. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok. And the main thing we're pushing is that YouTube channel. Once we get 1,000 subs, we're going to be giving away some free artwork. But we have the weekly gaming video every Wednesday on there as well. Uh, we have live streams on there as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a fun place to be. You know, Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. And you know, check out some of the live streams that happen almost every night around 8 p.m. Eastern time. Sometimes a little bit earlier. I usually go to like 10 o'clock, sometimes later. It all depends on the mood that I'm feeling and how much stuff I gotta get done around around here. So definitely go check that out. And if you are, uh, you know, an energy drink drinker and want to try something new, definitely go check out W Energy. Uh, the links will be down in the description below. But if you do, make sure to use promo code ROTTENREVIEWS at checkout to save yourself 10%. And I'll talk to you guys all later. Peace!